Hmm. Wonder what Mr. Bergman's doing today. It's a strange sound coming from his room. Hey, Mr. Sam, how you doing? Not too bad. What are you doing? I'm practicing. For what? Um, uh, well, I think you'll find out later. Um, why does this make me nervous? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know why it should make me nervous. I'm getting pretty good at this. At what? Uh, you're, you're throwing a ball against the board. Well, you know, um, you'll see, I guess, huh? Uh, okay. All right. I trust you. Sort of. <laughs> hey, Mr. Sims, my, my arm's feeling pretty good. Okay. Yes, yeah, feel really warmed up for today. For what? Um, something. Oh. Something, yeah. I, I have, feel sick to my stomach. I don't even want to know. You don't know? Okay, that's good that you don't know. Hey, today we're going to talk about precision and accuracy, and then there's this other topic, significant figures. Okay. So why don't we kind of just dive let's into it? Let's do it. Let's go. Okay. All right, let's do that. So the first thing I want to do is talk about accuracy. Okay. Right. Do you know what accuracy is? Well, that's how close you are to a given value or to a target. Yep, so that's right. So it actually depends upon the measuring device. All right. Okay? So if you want to be accurate, you need a good measuring device. Yeah, you got to make sure it's calibrated. So, I mean, yeah. something can be, it can make a very precise measurement to many, many decimal places, but if it's not calibrated properly, then it's not going to be close to the actual value. So calibrate means it's, yeah, it's set correctly. All right. And then precision is a little bit different. Uh huh. So actually, we said this. You're, you've already written down the definitions in your definition section. Yeah. Precision is how close you are. How close you are to the... Not how close. No. Is, precision is what? When you have multiple measurements, if they're precise, they're very close to each other. Multiple measurements. Let me write that down so everybody else can. Multiple measurements, and they're all close. Right. Right? So that's kind of like... The, it's kind of like the consistency, um, how consistently something measures and... Um, yeah, how consistently something measures a value. You have an idea, Mr. Sam. Okay. I think um, we should, like, illustrate this. I've been, I've been working my arm up, so I think we've oh. got a cool little illustration we ought to do right all now. All right, let's give it a shot. Okay, let's do that, all right? I'm still nervous. No, you'll be all right, I think. Okay. Um, what I want to do today is I want to talk about accurate precision, and I've got an interesting experiment today. Um, I'm going to take my safety glasses, I'm going to put them on, and my goal is, of course, to, if you look over here at Mr. Sam's, is he has an apple on his head. <laughs> I don't think I like this so much. Oh, boy. Oh, oh okay. you knocked my apple off. I knocked the apple off. And so the point here is I'm going to attempt to do the, I don't have a, my bow and arrow with me, so I'm going to attempt to throw the ball and knock the apple off of his head. So let's see how accurate I am. Okay. All right. Do I pan? What did I mark? Uh, that was not a very good thing. So what would you say about that? Well, that was a good thing. That was not very accurate, was it? Okay, let me see if I can be accurate. Okay. Oh! Mr. Bergman, what does he hit? All right, right in the ish, the middle. All right, we got the apple. It's on the floor by her foot. Okay. Now, uh, let's just keep doing a couple more trials and talk about accuracy and precision. All right, let's see how good I am. Okay. He's lost the tennis ball. I lost the tennis ball. Okay, so, all right, let's do this again. All right. Ah! <laughs> Put a mark on his head. <laughs> the apple fell. Okay. It doesn't count if you smack me in the face. To I know, I know, I know. All right. Okay, and let's do one more. Okay. Oh, you gotta hit him one more time. All right, hit the more. apple. Go. <laughs> wow. You better stick to right. Oh, there we go. Off the rebound. All right, let's talk. So, Dr. Boy, you zoom in here. Yeah, I'm gonna go, uh, calm myself down now. These are pretty close to the accurate answer, right? So, uh, chemists would say that this right here is accurate. Um, this up here, of course, is not accurate. Hitting me in the face was not accurate either. So <laughs> these are accurate. But actually, interestingly enough, if you group these three um, uh, points together, they're considered precise. Okay? Precision is close to the same answer, although not accurate. These three together are precise and accurate. The three times I actually hit him. This, of course, is inaccurate and imprecise. It's imprecise because there's only one spot.
Hey, Mr. Sams? Yeah, my head hurts, and I'm going to sit far, far <laughs> away from you for the rest of the day. Well, I was close most of the time. Yeah. No? Hey. Well. Should we talk more about precision and accuracy? Yeah, yeah. I hey, what would you say about this one right here? Um, I'm thinking that's not really accurate and not real precise. Not precise and not accurate. That's Kinda right. all over the place. Not precise or not accurate. So it's not accurate. And it would be not precise, would it? No. It's all over. Didn't, didn't get the correct Right, they're answer. multiple measurements, but they're not really close to each other. Yeah. Okay. And what about this okay, one? Okay, no, those, those are very precise because they're all close to each other, but they're not accurate. So if, let's say I had a bow and arrow and I was shooting at this target, um, that means I as a shooter am very consistent, but whatever I'm using to sight my shot in, yeah. it needs to be recalibrated. Yeah, yeah, my son used to, uh, he used to shoot bow and arrows competitively, and uh, they would say if you, they were usually happy if they had this kind of a, in warm-up, this, because they knew they were actually shooting in the right place, and if they just adjusted just a skosh, they could move it. And uh, get lots of bullseyes. Yeah. So. Okay, and this one, of course, is the best That's situation. That's accurate and precise. This is accurate and precise. Yeah, they're all close together, so they're precise, and they are close to the bullseye or our given value, so they're accurate. Yeah, cool. All right, so now it's second topic today. Okay. We want to talk about significant figures. Hmm. Now, What's the point of significant figures? Well, we are limited by the accuracy of our least accurate measuring device. So you're only as good as your least accurate measuring device. So right. everybody, of course, should be writing this down. Yep, and when we say least accurate, we're talking about like least number of decimal places measured or least number of significant yeah. figures measured. So let's take a look at a quick little video clip that will explain, I think, the point of significant figures. Mr. Bergman here with the apple. Yeah, it's the same apple. Remember this, Mr. Sam? I remember the apple. The apple, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got the apple, but I want to do something with the apple. I don't want to eat it. Um, it's actually kind of nasty. Um, I want to weigh the apple. And so what I brought with me today is I brought three scales. I've got a cheap uh, scale um, that costs approximately $100. I've got a, a slightly more expensive one, 300 actually, triple. And then I happen to have a very expensive balance, approximately $800. And I'm going to put the apple onto three different scales. So I'm going to put the apple on the first scale. All right, I'm going to read the balance. I can see the balance. It's probably hard to see the video. And it weighs 132.2 grams. All right? So we would actually say that this is accurate to, let me write this down here, the number of sig figs to four sig figs. Sig figs, SF. All right? Now I'm going to take the apple, and I'm going to place the apple onto the medium price balance. Okay. Now, has the apple changed its mass? Should be the same. It's the same mass. You didn't take a bite. What? I see a different number on hmm. my balance. I see that it weighs 132.18 grams. Now, has the apple changed its mass? Well, it looks like it lost 0 0.02 grams. Yeah, I'm that looking at these numbers. looks like it, but... Can it lose mass? No, not just sitting there. Not just sitting there. So what we're actually saying is that this balance um, is only accurate to four significant figures. Mm -hmm. This balance would be accurate to five significant figures. Oh, and it costs more, so you pay more money per sig fig. You get more money per significant digit. That's correct. Or sig fig or significant digit, same, same thing. These two numbers are actually the same number. They're measuring the exact same quantity. You're paying for the extra digit. If you think about this number, the 132, it is actually rounded, isn't it? It is. It is a rounded number of the 0.18. Now if I go to my expensive balance, and so if I place it on the expensive balance, and I read its reading, I get 132.18. Four grams. So for the $800 balance, I paid more money for the extra digit. And the 0.18 is actually rounded of this number, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So they round, this number rounds to this, which rounds to this. And of course, we would say that this is accurate to six significant figures. And you see, we're actually measuring the same thing. Scientists and mathematicians 
kind of look at the numbers a little bit differently. When you see 132.2, your math teacher would probably say 132.200000, right? Or something like that. That's what you would think. That is wrong when you do measurements. Actually, every number, every number that's a measurement is a rounded number. And the measuring device can get it less and less rounded, but to all numbers are rounded. 